and let's see are we live we are live and i am here in rsp film room number 61 with one of my favorite people that i get to watch film with and just hang out with in general i had the pleasure of doing that in la when he put me up for for a week so that i could do an assignment for my day job and that's one eric stoner <laughs> who's our rsp contributor and just all around great guy good writer and uh someone who you know it's always a pleasure to have on this show well eric welcome back thanks it's good to be back i can't believe that you're already on number this is 61 of these already that's crazy it is man it's just like you know you do one every week and it is sometimes a couple a week and it's, it's just kind of crazy this is the second one for the week and it's um awesome it's been fun man so you know we still keep getting good feedback with it and today is just going to be awesome because obviously we got eric here and we are going to get to watch someone that has been the subject of who will be the subject of a lot of scrutiny i think um coming out this year and who decided to leave early from ucla and that's linebacker miles jack um you know eric tell us a little bit about miles jack what you think of him why you wanted to watch him i mean i think it's obvious to a lot of our our diehard fans but for anybody who may not um you know have crawled out of a cave and haven't seen any college football for the past couple of years um he's he's very fun because well he started out his career he was splitting time between running back and linebacker um he even this year, they were still giving him a little bit of run as like a red zone running back, and he was very, very good at that. He's about six foot two thirty, so he's gonna there's gonna be that split on debate about um, whether he has NFL size for a linebacker. But he's a lot of fun because he plays with a level of physicality that you just it's very, very rare to see out of guys that size. And then they use him in a lot of cool ways. Um, there's some games of him that aren't even I mean they're not even really usable because when they play against spread teams. They'll use them basically exclusively as like a nickel corner almost. Like you watch the UNLV game from this year, Kansas State, the bowl game from last year. And he's pretty much just playing nickel corner. It's actually kind of reminiscent of what uh, Nebraska used to do with Levante David when they play against like Mizzou and teams like that. They just run cover one. And I remember Mizzou had, uh, I forgot the name of that tight end, but he, he was a tight end in name. But uh, yeah, he, um, he played for the Dolphins. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. forget the guy's name, but he was like one of those receiver tight end hybrids, and they just basically – Nebraska just put David on him almost exclusively and split him out of the box and just basically used him like a corner. So there's some reminiscence there of like how he's used, but th this game that we're going to watch against Virginia, more of a traditional offense, they're using him – at Mike, Will, and Sam, he's in the box almost every play. And it's really good because, like I said, you get to see, like, that level of physicality that he plays with that really, really pops up. He plays with that bully ball mentality. And, and for, for a guy that's only six foot 230, it's actually kind of surprising to see that, that level of physicality from him. Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, it was funny when I was out there with you. I went with our pal Ryan Riddle to see the UCLA-BYU game, and he was pretty quiet in that game because he was doing a lot of pass coverage right. against BYU until the end of the game when he made the game ceiling interception. But that was really the only play that you look at and go, well, th there he was, you know. Right. Otherwise, you go, I, I, I never saw him really do much. Right, right, totally. So that's a great explanation. So we're going to get to it. Uh, of course, we're going to do our little time-honored tradition of reading our little legal disclaimer here, and that's that the video is posted here on the RSP yeah. Film Room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hosted on this server. A little bit of a thing. Yeah, this little thing, you know, and that the original video content is not considered the property of the RSP Film Room. Videos are considered to be used under the fair use doctrine of the United States Copyright Law, Title 17 U.S., Sections 107 through 118, and the videos are used on this site for editorial and educational purposes only. And the RSP and its staff do not claim ownership of any original video content. The RSP Film Room and its staff don't use said video clips and advertisements, marketing, or direct financial gain. You're not going to see any Rogaine ads for uh, for this. All video content in each clip is considered owned by the individual broadcast companies. So we are done. We're going to get this thing pulled up so that Eric and I can see it, and we're going to get started. All right. How's that looking? Uh, it looks good to me. All right, cool. And you just let me know whether we want to slow it down or not, but we'll get started. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and slow it down, but 
said they got him. They got him started out at playing weak side linebacker right here. Yeah. And we're gonna see we're gonna see a gap play here that they're gonna run. And apparently I put on closed caption. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> You said to see him take on the kick out block by the fullback. Don't see him really losing any ground at all. That that was something that um, that really when we did this, we did a film room on Paul Dawson last year, and there wasn't really a lot of um, straight him taking on blocks straight up like that. It was more of us looking at his athleticism and things of that nature. But when you saw him try to take on blocks from like because they're kind of similar size, they're both about six foot two thirty, and anytime you'd see, um, You'd see Dawson taking on blocks even by fullbacks or tight ends. You'd see him on the ground a lot, getting bodied a lot, getting moved off of his spot. So just right there off the first play, the, the feeling each other out process, you don't see you see him stand that fullback straight up. He doesn't lose any ground. He rolls his hips through the contact. So Yeah, and this this translates very well to something that we saw earlier in the week when I watched with um, former running back Brandon Howard on CJ Pro Seas, which was – which was his his um, terminology of getting into the trees when when it comes to pass protecting. Mm -hmm. I can see how the reverse is true that you want to get as far upfield as you as you need to as a linebacker to be able to right. you know keep a push at the line of scrimmage and deliver that contact. Yep. And it's good because you don't see him just kind of curling up into a ball and absorbing the contact. You see him actually – he does take it on with his shoulder like he's supposed to, but you see his hand strike and you see his hips roll up and underneath the block and he can get that leverage so that way that he can extend and shed if he needs to. Yeah, that's good technique. And now we got him in the middle. And again, we're going to – oh, they have a little bit of run action there. And that is something that I've heard about him too, from because I, I have UCLA season tickets. You and I have talked about that before. So I like I talk to people kind of that in not in the program, but know things that are going on. And um, I have heard about him. He's not a like a huge huge film studier. That the the um, cerebral part cerebral part of his game isn't there. He's basically out there just going off of instinct. So. Um, whether or not that's something that's huge and matters to you, you look at it as, you know, either you can say he's not putting in the work or he's already this good and he's basically just going off of, like, off of football instinct and what he knows so far. So there might be another level to, of his game that's untapped at this point. Yeah, and I like you mentioning that because, you know, that's the question you'll have to ask as a as a personnel director if you're in the NFL and – and or a scout which is what do we do in the interviews what do we do when we when we talk with him and gauge whether or not we think he can become a student of the game and if he does it could be a lookout kind of situation here with that athleticism i mean certainly you see him reacting and he kind of overreacts in each direction before he finally makes the tackle but you know, you see a you see a bit of a ferocity here and a willingness yeah, to picking the ball carrier up off the ground and trying to slam him. Yeah, he, he plays like a bully. That that's the most fun thing about him because that it that's so important with linebackers, and I think it's something that gets like overlooked a lot, especially when we talk about like box safeties that aren't really going to play safety in the NFL and says, "Oh, just move him to linebacker." And it's like when you're playing in that box in the NFL, there's there's a certain required level of physicality that you need that to be able to play with because it, it's a it's grown men in their wrestling every single play. Yeah, it's this isn't and there aren't many safeties who play at the level of Thomas Davis. Right. Who, that you know, moves down into the box and and looks like a natural at being able to, you know, deliver that kind of punishment. It's, he almost kind of falls into the play here. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, I, let's look at that again a little bit. The read, the read's good. Yeah. 
stays stays on the outside shoulder there. Mm -hmm. And he realizes, you know, I mean, even though it's awkward, he realizes. You know, Right, you see, you, you there. Yeah, he knows that 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 offensive lineman is going for his leg, so he actually, like, he kind of falls into the play. But you see that he has the awareness to get his hands down on the back of the offensive lineman as he's trying to cut him and push the offensive lineman down and keep going in his pursuit. Yeah, and it's just these little awkward, kind of unscripted things that, you know, that just show you that he de definitely has a feel for what's going on. Right. And I, I mean, honestly, I would. This is one of those situations that I think is fun to talk about because we talk so much about the intellectual preparation and the technique and how you need that and how that's so important, um, along with athleticism. But if you have feel, if you have feel for what's going on, that can make up for. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a guy that would buy into a player who has feel if he has the athleticism to accompany it. Right. Totally. And part of that, too, is he has played a lot of offense in his career so far, too. So it just might be, you know, a, a natural understanding for him of what offenses are trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. So where is he here? He's, playing, uh, he's on the edge down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. So let's see what his edge skills look like, at least on this play. Not bad, but not. Yeah, you'd, you'd like to see him, you know, truly try to go through that block instead of like. Yeah. Kind of just tries to cut him down, just I and mean, run through that. Yeah, he's just he tries to push down, but he doesn't really push down hard enough. It's yeah. like I'm just gonna kind of like cartwheels over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't look as bad as that. He didn't look as bad as that 300 pound person I saw trying to do a cartwheel on a on a, <laughs> on a YouTube video recently, um, but it wasn't it wasn't far away actually. You know, at this point, you, you know, you just see him kind of overrunning. Yeah, exactly. Just overrunning the arc. He's unblocked. Yeah, and that's and you can see that's kind of a raw raw aspect to his game at this stage. And where and you know, and that and that also begs the question, where are you gonna use him? Where does right. he fit? Exactly. Exactly. Because I, mean, I can't I don't really see him being used on the line of scrimmage a whole lot. No. In the NFL. He just doesn't have that type of height and length. I mean, you you see him later in this game like They'll so we'll put him up on the line of scrimmage and have him like jam the tight end, like playing like a true Sam and jamming and running with the tight end. And he does, he does a pretty nice job of that actually, but actually being the guy to set the edge and come across the line of scrimmage, he's not going to be doing a whole lot of that. This is very, very good. Yes. The recognition. Uh, how yeah, instant he, sees, he sees that he sees ISO or it's not ISO, but he sees that give coming and he's just filling inside immediately. Yeah, he helps out, his, and he really helps out his team with that because you can see what happens on the backside of that runner. Right, and that's why it's what you were talking about with Brandon, why it's so important to be coming and filling and meeting downhill and playing close to the line of scrimmage because what you're doing, you're essentially plugging up those bubbles that exist in the front. You become a line, you become basically like, when you're meeting contact around the line of scrimmage, you're like, in, in terms of alignment, you become a part of the defensive line. You become, look at, I mean, look at UCLA, their defensive front. It's just a wall of blue bodies along that blue line of scrimmage line. That's exactly what you want it to look like. Absolutely. And now you have a free guy in the middle linebacker who's coming from the, from the running back's right to make the tackle. Right, and it's forcing... Force it like all this is plugged up and it basically forces it right back into the funnel. Yeah. And I just love, I mean, again, I just love the fact that when you look at his decision making, he takes one step, reads the play, and then he's like downhill. Yep. There, there's no waiting. And look, that's, that's a guard that he's standing up in the hole and folds over in half. Yes. 
And it's that well, same technique. Contact, you see him, you see the guard already get, or the, the puller, or it's not a puller, but you see the lineman getting bucked back. And then you see him just kind of slowly getting folded, folded in half as yeah. Miles extends and rolls his hips through contact. Yeah, it's excellent. You know, again, you know, a guard versus a 230 pound guy. And even though the guard's on top of him, the guard's mad because he, he knows what happened to him. Yeah, he got bucked in the hole. He yeah. got bucked right in the middle of the hole. Again. There he does it again. And this time we're not looking at a guard. I think we're looking at a tackle. Right. Or... Like I said, you can just see with the, the flexion in his hips and the arch in his back, there's a lot of power being delivered through that blow. Yeah, and here's that tackle coming right through here to block, and he's like, okay, let's play. And again, I mean, it's met well before, the tackle's made well before that, but you can see he, you know, he definitely, you can see how people look at him as a bully, and they want to bully him back. Right. I mean, look at all the little pushing and shoving going on after this play. He's got two guys now who are like, I want a shot at Jared Jack. There's a lot of linebackers. I mean, even in the NFL, where as soon as they they have to win by beating offensive linemen to their spots, and that's the only way that they can win. It doesn't mean that they're not physical players. It just means that when an offensive lineman gets their hands on them, it's usually over for them. And you can you can tell just right off the bat that He's going to be to be able to win. Even if he doesn't get to his spot, he has the athleticism to do it, but he's going to be able to to, to have to be to have block deconstruction and be able to beat and shed blocks at the point of attack. Yeah. Which like that's it, it just makes it it just makes him a more versatile NFL defender. You don't have to worry about protecting him as much. There's just so many more things that he can do and get away with when you know that you can defeat blocks. Yeah. Physicality. And it's and it's one of those things that much will be made about his size, but when you can see what he's able to do, it shouldn't be that big of a question. It's just a guy, question of where. The guys that you see doing like that and that can play with physicality against tackles and guards like that, it's like the six two, two hundred and sixty pound like Dante high tower types, you know. Yeah. The, big, the bigger, more physical guys that you say, oh, they're like three, four inside linebackers. That's all you're really going to use them for. Are they truly like three down players? And you see a, a, a guy with, you know, like I said, they use him pretty much. They use him as a nickel corner a lot, and he's playing with that level of, of and he he shows that that block deconstruction ability and that that ability to play along and be in a part of the line of scrimmage and his run fits and everything. And it's, it, he's just, he's a very, very complete player. Yeah. And I love, I mean, you know, love the ability to be able to get away from the first blocker and be in the play. Yep. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a parallel. It's like Steve Smith of the, uh, as a wide receiver, you know, right. you might look at him and say, Oh, he's too small. He's too short. You know, he's too old. He's too broken, whatever. You know, it, he just continues to make plays and kill people. Yep. Little guys with big man game. Yeah. So why do you, why is he why does he just kind of wait back like that? Is it more for just being you know disciplined to make sure that nothing comes yeah, out of here? Yeah, the that, that little end around to hold. Th that's basically what that end around is trying. That end around action is trying to do. It's trying to they run the dive and then well not the end around but the the option coming back to yeah. the weak side is basically meant to hold those weak side defenders so they can't get into that inside dive run fit immediately. And then here where he's kind of hanging back, he's just waiting to make sure that he doesn't get into that pile and somebody slipped through. Right. Yeah. Or even like that Shaq, that Shaq Thompson just kind of waiting for that ball to pop out. True. Because that's actually a good – I don't know how Shaq has been so far – in the NFL this year, but that that's actually a really, really good contrast of guys with very similar, probably height, weight, speed profiles and coverage ability and everything. But you can just tell the level 
like I, I keep using that phrase, but the level of physicality between the two is like completely night and day. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I think Shaq Thompson's skills really come you come to the fore when it when it comes to his pass coverage. Right, being more of a let's let me dive through and make the ankle tackle and and finding an angle to shoot through. Right, and, and using my speed and quickness, but not not thumping. Right. Yeah, I mean, thus far, I mean, it's it's just very clear that back really quick. Yeah. So one more time. Here we go. Yeah, I think they got. Yeah, that's a good job of him playing playing the fill and the cutback on the same play, dancing back and forth. Yeah. First to get his hands on the on mm -hmm. the tackle here. And that nice little shove yep. helps him kind of rip back inside. Yeah, good thought. Good thought. Well, he kind of he kind of slow plays the fill. He slow play. He's kind of like playing games with the back a little bit. Slow play the fill. Make the runner stutter and come back inside. Mm -hmm. And then slips right back underneath. Yeah. Good. That's good. That's good linebacker play. Yeah, because if he does go outside here, the tackle probably does have an angle on, mm -hmm. on Miles Jack right here. This could have been a much bigger play when you look at the way it's set up. Right. I mean, look at that. Yeah, he's got he's got an alley. Would have gone for at least the same amount, maybe mm -hmm. a little more. So now we got a nickel type of look here. That's a nice. Every, yeah, they've got everybody on him on that screen, and he still he still makes the play. Yeah. I mean, he keeps enough guys at bay here. He keeps one guy at bay here enough, and keeps the the outside from opening up. Because he recognizes it pretty quick, and they got they get bodies on him almost immediately. Yeah, They'll run it all the way back to the snap. Here it comes. They kind of run this receiver like stock blocking him almost, like a little crackback block actually. Yeah, it's like a little screen with a crackback block from the wide receiver. He gets off that and then beats beats the, the tackle. Yeah. You know, That's good football play. Yeah. Let's see. He's that guard, and he's right up in it. Nice job with the shoulder, too. Yep. He picks a side. Something that, something I know Ryan's talked about a good bit is, you know, you want to make sure that you pick a side, usually when you're pass rushing, but when you're just right. engaging a defender, pick a side. No wonder Jim Moore is mad. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. He's good, man. Yeah, he's out. I, I forgot the name of the, the dude, but one of their defensive linemen is pretty good too. The guy it's the guy that they, they use him as a two gapper a lot, but Yeah. He's I know. Like, he, he's he's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll have to watch one on him sometime soon too. Mm -hmm. I was noticing the, the defensive lineman when I was watching Miles in this game. 
Yeah, at BYU, they were getting a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Boot rolls, he expands with the quarterback. I mean, you just, you know, good job covering the field there. He does his part. You know, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, again, he's, he doesn't try yeah, and take. Something that you do notice from him is that, and a lot of the undersized linebackers, like I said, because they have to beat blockers to their spot, you'll see them freelance and gamble more. And you'll, you'll actually see them like knifing in and making more plays that are a result of that, trying to beat blockers to their spot and get in there quickly. And what you see from him, he, he like I said, he plays like a true thumper almost where it's very, where it's almost like he's just trying to fit up in the run fit and plug his spot and hold his ground and everything. And that's such a great point because in the NFL, part of that problem that we're going to see with some of the smaller guys who try to beat them on quicks and make these big plays in the college games in the NFL, suddenly they're not good at doing that. They lose their gap discipline and they give up big plays so if you've got Jack, he may not be making the fl as the, the same flashy plays as a guy in similar size and, and athletic ability, but he's doing his job. Right. It's going to translate better to the NFL. Boom. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the center, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One more time. Or oh, that's the that's it might be the guard coming yeah. off there. It's the guard. It's the left guard. Dang. There's there's a lot of pop in those hips, man. Yeah. Let's see if he blitzes or drops here on this. Yep, he comes. Nice. Mm -hmm. I don't think we get to see it the way we really want to there, but. Wait, what you notice too that he's really, really good at, and you see him do it on that play, you saw him do it on a on a run play, or where you, the play that you were talking about with Ryle, Ryan. Picking the side. Picking the side, is that you see that he's very good about getting that his outside shoulder across the body of the blocker and he can rip all the way underneath and then that allows him to get back square through into pursuit yeah instead of taking the blocks on with his inside shoulder and getting sealed off like that and basically only having half of his body to work with he works and rips that his his outside shoulder and his outside hip through across the body of the actual lineman and then like i said allows him to get his whole body through the contact and into pursuit yeah, I mean, look at that. It comes right through clean. All he has to do is use his arm, and he's got a good extension of the arm to ensure that. Yeah, that's really a nice play. That's a very impressive play. Look at that. Yep. He makes it look routine. I mean, it doesn't even look flashy. A lot of guys really struggle with that concept of getting that outside shoulder through and across the body of, of the guy trying to block him. And he, he's, he's very, very natural at it because he's done it multiple times in this game. Yeah. You see him on the edge, taking on a couple blocks, lose contain. And so is he usually responsible for the calls with this team? I believe it was Kendrick's last year and he and now Miles was this year. Mm. Yeah, they've had they've had some crazy linebackers come through there the last few years. Yeah, right. When it was Bar Kendrick's and um and Jack, all three of them together. That was that was 
Yeah, it's been it was delightful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not for other teams. Right. So so let's talk a little bit about his injury. I mean, mm-hmm. what what is the nature of the injury that he has and and I think they said it was an MCL tear. It wasn't an ACL tear. Um or no, it was it was a meniscus tear, I think. Okay. So, it was so they shut him down for the year basically and i mean i don't it doesn't sound like it's going to be anything serious it sounds like he's going to be able to work out and everything by combine time so unless there's like setbacks or anything like that i can't see it being like something that's going to hang over him really yeah i mean if it I, you would have to talk to g more about that but i just clean cleaning up the meniscus i don't think is that like really crazy or invasive of a procedure i to my knowledge. Yeah. From the, you've got, like, you've got like multiple ligament tears or anything like that. No, nah, it's just a, it, you know, it may shorten his career long term. Right. But, but short term, he still be the same player. Right. I mean, he's, he's got that insurance policy too, to where he's going to get his money, whether he goes in the first round or not. So it just made a lot of sense for him to come out, I think. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, the thing is like with, especially with defenders and stuff like that is like, if the only knock on you really is your size and that's not something that you can fix in college anyways, why, why bother waiting around? It's not like another year is going to make him, you know, grow two inches and gain 20 pounds. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if I was recommending if that, if miles Jack was my son, I'd say, yeah, man, go ahead and go in the NFL, make your money, put it away. You want to, if you wanted to pursue your degree you can pursue that in the summertime, you can go finish up, you can finish up later, just put money away and make sure that you got it, you know, set up for your education when you decide that, you know, it's time to hang it up and have another career. But why, why waste another year? (laughs) Why waste another year? If you know what you want your career to be, right. You know, five to 10 years. And they only have so many years of earning potential. That's the thing. Yep. Capitalize on it. Yep. I think they got him for a horse collar right there. Yeah. But you definitely see, you know, with a scat back like this, the speed he has to. To get back out there. Yeah. Yeah, a little horse collar, a little face mask. <laughs> He's mean, man. He's He does not play a nice brand of football. No. And I think that's what made him a good running back, too. I really enjoyed watching him at the running back position. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. If you – I mean, I mean, he only played extensively, really, his freshman year. But did would, was he an NFL caliber back, do you yes. think? Okay. Yes, I thought he was. I thought I was I, – I, I profiled him last year in an, in an article of Football Outsiders, and I, th- I thought that he had that. He, he knew how to time his burst. I thought he had pretty good footwork, and he certainly knew how to – you know, kind of the way Eddie Lacy uses his size to deflect contact right. under it. He, you know, Jack knew how to apply what he did all, on one side of the ball to the other. I, right. I thought he could be as good of a running back – as he was a linebacker, if not better. Okay. And look at this right here. I mean, look at that timing here again. And boom. <laughs> See, that's perfect assignment football from yeah. he's playing, he's playing, he's actually playing Mike on this play. He's to the side with more with more surface area. Yeah. And he sees that backside guard pulling and he meets him in the hole. He doesn't wait for him to get up into it. He meets him in the hole and causes problems for the running back. Instead of trying to dance around and tackle the running back, he causes problems for the running back by blow, by putting that blocker right in his lap. Yeah, he just detonated the wall that that running back wanted to run behind. Yeah. He set off a car bomb in the middle of the play in yeah. the running back's lap. Boom. Yeah. And he bounces off of him, and there's like no chance for him to maintain that momentum, even though the lineman's there to, to finish up the play. Yeah, that's just that's that's beautiful. So they got him at Mike here again. Yeah, not much you'd say there. Not running him into his side. I mean, he's one. He's one of those guys where I think that you don't even where you don't even have to say, oh, he's like 
because he's kind of undersized. I don't even think that he's just a weak side linebacker in the NFL. I totally think that he might be able, he can get away with playing Mike. Yeah, I think he could too. I'm. I think we're going to hear a lot about how he can't from some people, and there's going to. I, I really do believe that. You know, there's going to be some of that party line that says what he can and can't do because of his size. But there, it's going to be clear that they have and they've either watched the tape and just decided that oh, it's too big of a, um, it's too big of a gap to jump here and say that he can do the same thing in the NFL, and that's a question, right. or they're just going to disregard it from the get go. Right. I mean, because I like I said, he's he's probably about the same size as Levante, and Levante plays will. But if you wanted to play Levante at Mike, he could play middle linebacker. Yeah. Daryl Washington's another one. He, he's kind oh, of. Oh yeah. He's been a, when he's actually played, he's been a beast and a bully at inside linebacker in a three four. Navarro Bowman, another one. Yeah. You just mentioned three fantastic players. Man, was Washington a monster on the field? That's that's one of the saddest, yeah, saddest NFL careers. It's very, very because he is when he plays, man, he is good. Yeah, yeah, He's special. Well, Bowman's kind of sad right now too after that injury. He I just can't believe, if he want. I mean, what talking about knee injuries and everything after what he suffered? He says he has to get to get there like two he has to warm up his knee for two hours before he can even practice yeah like just to get it loose enough to jog around and practice that's crazy yeah for sure <laughs> i was asking that with dr gene a couple of weeks ago and and he was saying that it might get it should get better over time but right. it's still you know it, it definitely look he definitely doesn't look the same right now right In, in my opinion, he was he was the best linebacker in the NFL before that injury. Oh yeah, he was better, he was better than Willis. I mean that that whole division was stacked. Every single team has amazing <laughs> linebackers, and he was the best one, man. Yeah, true enough. It's funny how the a, the NFC West has kind of turned into this physical. In some ways, on defense, the defenses are pretty physical and savvy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, I mean, I didn't watch that Thursday night game, but from the San Francisco Seattle game, but everyone said it was kind of just like a slop fest, like you would expect. But those NFC West games, the, the, the brand of football that they're playing and the guys that they have on defense is very, very, very fun. I mean, even the Rams with Jeff Fisher, Jeff Fisher, the way that he zagged when everybody else was zigging and just loaded up on defensive linemen and running backs and, Yep. They've got a team that can compete now. Yep. And we're in a passing league, but we have the we have the St. Louis Rams and the uh, and the uh, Seattle Seahawks still pounding the ball down your throat when yep. they have every chance to do it. And San Francisco would love the opportunity to yeah. continue of doing that even after Frank Gore. See, this, this is what I was talking about earlier when they got him lined up at Sam over the tight end, and this is beautiful. They got lined up, gets hands on, gets physical reroutes at the line of scrimmage, pushes him down. Yeah, I mean he he just destroys that route. I mean, look at the turn of the hips right there. And it's just enough where it's he's shielding the man more than he's really I'm sure he's pushing, but right. it's more of that's a change of direction. Mm -hmm. The tight end just trying to change direction because he realizes he's screwed here. Yep. And he he basically falls down because of that. Yep. Come on, get started. There you go. There's the jab step. Hits off of Jack's knees and it's over. Yeah, that that hip transition and ability to to turn those hips in multiple directions and multiple steps is that's pretty impressive. Yeah. What we haven't seen from this exposure that I know I've seen from others is his ability. You know, this was very important for us to see because I think it answers the biggest questions that that, that they will have about him, which is playing the run, being right. able to build gaps, being physical. Right. But what he's really – what he's known for is this, if you haven't seen him before, is the ability to cover, 
to play some zone and yep. be a ball hawk in yep. the field. And then you see him just beating up the tight end at the line of scrimmage again, not even letting them release. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's what that that's why I, I wanted to do this game because, like I said, you watch a lot of his videos, and it's him out of like I said, basically playing nickel corner, and that people are going to be talking about that. That's what he's going to bring to you immediately. But like you said, the questions about being able to play in the box does he have the level of physicality of an NFL linebacker? This game went a long way, and this was the very first one of the year. So, and I think it went a long way in answering a lot of those questions. I wish we could have gotten to see him play against Stanford. Yeah. I, that might be one for the Stanford last year that we might have to like that I might have to dig up and dig through because um, Stanford's always a tough matchup for UCLA. They always out UCLA wants to be the bullies of the Pac-12 South, and then um, Stanford comes in from the North and it always ends up out bullying the bullies. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so let's see if there's anything on here on YouTube. No, I don't see anything right off the bat. So all right. Well, that was cool. I mean, this was definitely, I mean, this was definitely fun. I'm wondering if, you know, when we look at him, I mean, where do you think he'd be a best fit right now for a team? And what are some of the teams that you feel like that would be, I mean, do you see him more as a, as a, as a four, three outside guy four three inside guy. I mean, you know, he mentioned he could be all those things, but. Yeah. I mean, I think he's one of those, it's very, very similar to like, to like with Bowman to where, I mean, you could play him. He could be the will in a three, four. He could be the Mike in a three, four. He could be the Mike in a four, three or the will in a four, three. I don't think you're ever going to really want to use him on the line of scrimmage a lot. Like he'll never, he's not anybody. He's not somebody that you'd want it, Sam really, but pretty much any front, I think he could, he could handle the Mike or the will spot in, in any, any front that you wanted him to run. You'd probably prefer him to be at will because then you could, uh, well, I don't even know because, a good coverage middle linebacker. Or locker. Yeah, it completely compresses the middle. I mean, look at the what a difference Bobby Wagner makes for Seattle when he plays versus when he doesn't play. He completely compresses the middle of the field. And yeah. so, I mean, it really just depends on, on how, like, your defense, the playmaking linebacker in that defense, or the most important one, that's the one that you're going to want him to play. Well, I know your buddy Charles McDonald or our buddy Charles McDonald really wants him in Atlanta right now. Yeah, that's all I ever see on Twitter is him. Whenever somebody <laughs> says Miles Jack, I see him pop up and, and write in Atlanta. Future Atlanta Falcon, Miles yeah. Jack. Yeah, he's doing um, the wishful I thinking. That. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, because look, look at how Seattle has used KJ Wright and how many different it's, – it's actually exactly like that where – I mean, and KJ has, has played some Sam too when – I mean, the first year he played Sam almost exclusively, and then they uh, they started mixing in Irvin at Sam and and things of that nature, and that's when KJ started playing the weak side. So KJ plays middle linebacker when when Wagner goes out. So there's a I, I could see that being a fit, and they can they can use him in wherever he, he can be that kind of a like that KJ Wright type player. I mean, he doesn't quite have the the size. I don't know how tall is Bobby Wagner. He's only like six foot, actually, huh? Yeah, I think he is. So, yeah. so there, yeah. I mean, I could totally see that as a fit. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's six one. He's six feet two forty one. Yeah, which is right in that range of, right. of Miles Jack. Which right there, that should tell you, if you're going to question his size, don't. Right. At 30 at what, 20, 21 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He'll be 240 in no time if he oh, wants well, you to. Can, you can tell by his build, he's not built like, like Telvin Smith, where he's got very, where he's got very, very skinny, like skinny lower body, skinny arms and everything. Like Telvin's always going to struggle to maintain 225. Like yeah. Miles, you look, he's got a very thick build. He's going to keep filling out. He's going to keep getting, he's going to, he's got room to add muscle and, and, it looks like to, to be able to keep that weight on without problems. Yeah. Telvin Smith looks like the, like the war done of like linebackers. Yeah, totally. You know? he's, a, he's a little guy. Yeah. So it's awesome. But no, man, this was a lot of fun. And for everybody at the RSP film room, we definitely thank you for, uh, for joining us today and stay tuned for next week. Um, I'm not sure what's coming up next week, but we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted on Twitter. Take care. Y'all.